Our next scientist this evening is Tal Rabin. She's a manager and research staff member of the Cryptography Research Group at IBM's TJ Watson Research Center. The National Research Council's Cybersecurity Report to Congress says her area of research in cryptography is, quote, seen as exactly the right primitives for building distributed systems that are more secure. I don't know quite what that means. I think it's in code. I'm sure she will explain it to us. Please help me welcome Tal Rabin. Hi. Um, so if you were asked what a neuroscientist does or a linguist does, even before you heard the talks today, you might have some idea of what to answer. However, with cryptography, things are a little different. When I say to people that I'm a cryptographer, I hear a varied uh, set of reactions. The most famous one is, wow, you're a photographer. That's so exciting. <laughs> and um, you should see the disappointment on people's faces when I say, no, no, a cryptographer. Then there are the ones who tell me, oh, you're a cartographer. And oh, that's interesting. Clearly, they don't think that. But um, I wonder, who are these clearly educated people who know that there's a profession of people who draw maps, but don't know what a cryptographer does? And then we have the moviegoers. These come the closest to knowing what I do. And they say, ah, it's like the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> and who wouldn't want to look like Audrey Tattoo? But we're going to stick in this talk to reality. So. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what crypto is, very, very high level. Um, but before that, not that I can really see you guys, but how about a show of hands? Who thinks that they use cryptography at least on a daily basis? OK. On a weekly basis? OK. On a yearly basis? OK. So the opinions here vary, but I'm sure that those of you who did not raise your hands would be very, very surprised to know that you use cryptography multiple times a day. Every time that you go to the internet, you enjoy the benefits of what cryptography has to offer you. So what is cryptography? So cryptography is a mathematical basis for everything in the internet that you consider as privacy and security. We offer privacy by something that we call encryption, but is more commonly known as codes or ciphers. And we offer security by many means, which I won't all be discussing today. But for example, passwords provide you security. When you go to your bank account, you enter your password, and this guarantees that nobody is going to be illegally using your bank account. So in order to tell you a little bit about cryptography, I'm going to invite my two daughters to the stage to help me. So here is Dana. And Yaeli, come up as well. And here is Yaeli. And um, they're both um, ready to help me tell you about cryptography. So what would our life be without it? Yaeli has been monitoring um, an eBay sale the whole day. Um, she's looking for a special edition of a Waldo book. We're going to be needing it later on in, uh, in, the, in the presentation. And um, she suddenly sees that, yep, she's got it. She won it. <laughs> she was the highest bidder on the, on the book. Um, she has to pay for it. I don't know if you can see very well. She's quite young. She doesn't have a credit card. But Dana is a very nice sister. She's generously offered um, to give Yaeli her credit card. Yaeli enters the credit card number into the auction. And the book is on its way. Um, however, we live in a big uh, apartment building. And Snoop the Snooper, who lives also in this building, is sitting and listening to the communication that people are having. This can be done. You need to buy um, a few gadgets at Radio Shack, hook them up together, and you can be listening to the communications that other people are having on the internet. And because we said that there is no cryptography, then there is no encryption, and there is no privacy. So when Dana's password comes across the line, 
Snoop hits the jackpot, so he thinks, and as you can see, Dana, this is when she sees the charge for $1,000 for car parts on her credit card. Not so happy. Okay, so um, think about yourself today. When, or this past week, let's say, what did you use your internet for? Did you um, um, try to spread unfounded gossip? Did you pay with credit cards? Did you write love letters? Did you negotiate a contract with someone? You did so many things that now when you're sitting here, you feel a little bit uncomfortable if you would think that they had all gone in the clear on the internet and Snoop and many, many other peoples would have read them. Um, so, um, that is one thing that I said, that we provide privacy, that crypto provides privacy. But as I said, we also provide security. And the example that I gave you is exactly um, the use of passwords. So when you go to your bank account, you enter your password, they know that it's you. And by that means, your bank account is protected so that nobody can have illegal access to it and rob you blind. So you can see, and I'm not talking of many, many other applications, but what you can see is that it's a happy world, and you can see Dana and Yaeli are very happy, that it's a world that does have cryptography. And in fact, um, cryptography currently is indispensable for the functioning of our society, because our society is so heavily dependent on the internet that we really need for it to be private and secure. And without cryptography, um, this would not be possible. And the nice thing about cryptography is that we do everything that we do extremely elegantly with beautiful, beautiful techniques. And just to show you this, I will give you one example. It's not going to be a mathematical example, even though I said that crypto is based on mathematics, because I don't know how much you'd appreciate me then, but I'll give it to you in a different uh, uh, context. Okay, so for this, we have to go down, back to our basics. Where's Waldo? I hope that most of you know who, how this works, but in case you don't, here's a little tutorial about where's Waldo. There's Waldo. And if I'd ask you, where is Waldo, I think you'd fairly easily tell me, ah, oh, he's right there. You can all see him. Okay, great. But what would you say if I said, now where's Waldo? It's not that easy. Um, so this lends itself to a very, very fun game. We open a page like that and can be played with two or more people, but let's say two. We open a page like this and then we say, the first one to find Waldo gets $10 from the other person. You know, the $10 negotiable based on your income, but you choose some <laughs> level of, uh, of uh, payment. Okay, so Dan and Yaeli have decided that they're going to be playing the game. They decided on one buck. They're still only babysitting. Okay, so they're sitting, they're playing. This is how you play the game. You sit in front of the book and you're looking. It's a little hard. You saw the picture before, so let's give them a second or two and we'll see if one of them finds it. Well, yep, turns out, Dana. She found him. Here he is. And she's about to point to him on the book. But, Gaeli, in honor of our master of ceremony, Faith Saley, she says, wait, wait, don't tell me. And why doesn't she want Dana to tell her where Waldo is? Because it'll destroy all the fun, right? Yaeli, still herself, wants to go and find Waldo on the page. And if Dana shows her where Waldo is, it's over. She can't look for him anymore. So Dana says, fine, you know, pay up, one dollar. My little one is no fool. And she says, what? You know, I'm going to pay you one dollar without knowing where Waldo is? You didn't show me where he is. And then she says to her, convince me. Convince me that you know where Waldo is, but don't show me where Waldo is. So you're sitting here probably thinking, I would hope you're thinking that. If not, you should come, we have a job for you. If you're thinking, how can she do this? How can she show that she knows where Waldo is without pointing to him? It would be really amazing. At least I find it amazing. Okay, 
So Dana's up for the task. She's thinking, how can she show Yaeli and convince her that she knows where Waldo is? My daughters are very smart. After a short while, Dana runs to the kitchen. She comes back with scissors and a large sheet of paper, of brown paper. I would love to give you some time um, to think about what she does with the scissors and the paper, but my time and our time together is short, so I'll tell you what she does. She starts by cutting a little, little, tiny hole in the paper. And then, what does she do with that tiny hole? She places it over the book. Can you see Waldo? She only shows Yaeli the little Waldo that she found, but she has to place the brown sheet of paper very strategically over the book so that Yaeli will not see where the book is because if she sees the outline of the book, she'll know exactly where Waldo is. So she hides the location of the book and only shows little Waldo and now Yaeli knows. She's convinced that Dana has in fact found Waldo. And I recommend this if you have little siblings, children, friends, ask them this thing. It's really a cute thing to, to play. Okay, so as I said, this is really, really fun. But how does it relate to cryptography? You can't believe that we really do things with Waldo. And in fact, we don't. We have mathematical implementations for exactly this thing. And in fact, these things are being used. And this is something that relates to a notion which we have in cryptography, which is called zero-knowledge proofs. And it is mind-boggling that it can do this amazing thing, that you can convince somebody of something without showing them the thing itself. Because we're really used to doing it by showing things. And this is one of the beautiful techniques that we have in cryptography. And let me try and tie it into you for an example of how maybe you could use it, though we do not in reality use it for passwords. But think about the following. When you go to your bank and you type in your password, you're actually sending your, your password. It's being sent over uh, encrypted. And maybe somebody could hack it, and then they could see the password in the future. It could be used. But if you'd use a zero knowledge proof like this thing, you could be able, instead of giving your password, you'd be able to convince the bank that you know your password without ever sending it. And nobody else can do this convincing aside from you. Only Dana, who knows where Waldo is, can show you Eli. But another person who doesn't know where Waldo is cannot create that little hole, place it on the book, and have Waldo appear through it. So this is really um, a fun thing of how to show cryptography. But to sum it up, I want to say, but this is just to sum the crypto part up, is that cryptography really is an amazing um, uh, thing. And today it's, as I said, indispensable for the functioning of our society. And it has glorious, beautiful math involved in it, which is really, really fun. However, this is... Uh, women in science spotlight. So let me earn my place in the spotlight. And let me say that I said I used where is Waldo, but the truth is that an appropriate question in our field is where is the female cryptographer? We are very few. Um, uh, there may be 10% if I probably am counting everybody twice or something like that um, in our field. And uh, it's really very heavily uh, male dominated and on a day-to-day -day basis maybe you don't feel it at every moment but sometimes it just grabs you how really everything is set and determined and fixed by men so I think that it's really unfortunate and I think it for two reasons one is the diversity is good for any field whether it's a science or whether it's something else um, people are different, and different opinions and different ways of thinking contribute and improve um, anything, and specifically the sciences as well. And the second thing is that I think that um, cryptography and um, computer science are really amazing areas. And I am saddened by the fact that women are not involved in them enough and are not reaping the, the benefits of being involved in such 
a fascinating area that really has also impact on our lives in such a fundamental way. So if you heard it here and you think that this is great, then please spread the word. We need more female cryptographers. We need more female computer scientists. And in fact, we need more female scientists all around. So help me thank Dana and Yaeli for helping me explain things to you. And thank you very much.